Okay. Welcome, everyone. This is February 17th, and you are uh, watching at home the Public Works Advisory Board meeting. Uh, we have a quorum. In fact, we're all here. So we'll get started. Um, we will start with a moment of silence. Thank you. Uh, anybody have any announcements? No, 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 seeing none, we'll move on. And we have no presentations, and we have no members of the public here, so we will open and close public comment quickly. Move on to the consent calendar. Um, uh, everybody had a chance to look at the minutes of the January 20th meeting? Yes. Yeah. Okay. I'd like to make a motion to approve the um, minutes as stated. All right. And a second by Stu. All right. All in, uh, any, any discussion? No. Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? <laughs> all right. Director's report. Uh, it was a very good report. And I will start. Does anybody have questions? We can start with Debbie if you have any questions. Not at this time. OK. Jan. Just a little one. Uh, it's on the stormwater storm preparation part of the staff report where it says if a property owner wants to remove trees and debris from the portion of the creek that is on their property, it is the property owner's responsibility to acquire the per required permit from Department of Fish and Wildlife and any other necessary agency. My question was, do you need a permit to clean up the debris or is this a permit to move a tree that might cause debris? <coughs> You don't need a permit to remove trash and uh, uh, debris. It's if you need to remove uh, live vegetation, basically, uh, to um, out of the creek channel. In anticipation of debris. Correct. Of, okay. Okay. Thank you. That's it. Okay. Um, I have a few quick questions. Um, one I noticed, um, and it picked up, I think, in the bicycle report, talking about angle parking along Market. Uh, street and I wasn't aware you guys were going to do that but I did notice coming down Market Street it looks like you put in perpendicular parking and it looks like it was recently striped for that purpose or has that been there for a while? We did that uh, maybe three weeks ago oh, okay. uh, four weeks ago it's been on the um, the Beach Street specific plan since the early 90s that we uh, uh, um, we're supposed to do that, and I'm not sure why we never have, but it was basically council's direction to uh, complete that work with the objectives from last year, so we did. Oh, okay. The Market Street section we talk, were talking about angled parking on was on the other side of Morro Bay Boulevard oh, okay. uh, for angled parking along so there. Along, between uh, what is it, Pacific, uh, towards the Pacific Correct. side. Correct, and then there was a, uh, we did a staff report to council uh, a couple weeks ago about um, um, we had an objective to implement um, the measures that were in our 2008 uh, parking management plan. Um, but before we implemented those measures, we since it was a 2008 plan, we brought those back to council and they wanted us to reconsider what the uh, council had already approved uh, back in 2008 for that uh, angled parking. Oh, so. Okay. Um, we'll be reconsidering that. Have you had any complaints since it's gone in with the... Um, the perpendicular parking, I haven't received any um, complaints in our office. Uh, well, it adds a lot more parking to that yes. street, um, and I think it's probably a good idea. Um, the other thing I noticed was at the Pacific and Main Street, where we talked about that a few months back, you have gone in, did all the crosswalks in that location, and... Looks like, and I assume that was recently striped. Yes, also. it was. Uh, oh. It's about the same day as oh, the okay. uh, um, Market Street oh, uh, okay. perpendicular. Was perspective. there other places around town where it got that kind of? No, that was the really the only, only two. Place. Okay, I just yeah. happened to drive by them today and happened to notice <laughs> them, so it did pick up on my radar. The second thing was you included regarding the new WRF facility. And, and this is more for my own edification because, as you're aware, I sit on the RIFCAC committee. I missed that joint session that occurred, and this is more just to pick your brain a little bit regarding it. 
and it's going back to the roof cac on march 1st to make a determination whether to go to the rigetti property is that how it was left at the yes end? it was uh, basically to make a recommendation to council whether to uh, whether the rigetti property would be the uh, to switch the prefer to the preferred location oh okay so once they do that then the city council move forward correct on, on the selection i think that's it for me on the director's report david <coughs> Just very quick, based uh, also on the uh, Pacific and Main Street intersection and the striping there, um, is the uh, the green painting going to be put in soon? Because what I saw was just the, some white line work done. Yeah, it's it's just the um, um, ladder crosswalk or the high visibility crosswalks, yeah. and then the um, diagonally hashed bulb outs right, there. Right. Um, uh, that was what was uh, agreed on with the council to okay. do there. And then at um, the green paint, well, it's looking like we're gonna do up at San Jacinto, uh, basically between probably Cedar and Main Street uh, there. It's uh, um, uh, a problem area for those that cycle to Del Mar Elementary to navigate that intersection. Right. And, Sometimes even us adults have a hard time uh, getting... <laughs> it's hard navigating a vehicle at that intersection yes. sometimes. <laughs> uh, okay, thanks very much. I just wanted to follow up on, since David and Stephen are talking about Pacific, um, two questions. How long does that striping last? I mean, is that like a 10-year guaranteed paint job? And do they only put down one coat? Um, that's um, waterborne latex paint. It might last two years um, if we're lucky. Yeah. Um, so it, uh, waterborne paint is it's a regular maintenance item. You oh, need it is. To, okay. You need to paint so it. So this is uh, what you're. This is expected. It's expected. Okay. Yeah. It won't last that long. Okay. Uh, it even lasts shorter amount of time the closer you get to the water because you pick up a little sand um, there, okay. and it. So we generally will use thermoplastic striping on the Embarcadero. This was kind of an experiment with those painted bulb outs, which based on the vertical geometry, they don't show up as well as, um, as when you're looking down at an aerial photo of what they will look like. Uh, so um, we'll see how, how well we'll continue to observe that intersection there and uh, probably do some counts um, and uh, speed <laughs> surveys. Chris. Um, no comments except for the nice thing about the paint wearing quickly, we're going to see where people are actually driving and whether it's actually doing any, right. any work. Stu. I'm ready. Uh, <laughs> the Pacific and Maine, did we talk about putting a cross traffic does not stop sign there too? A little little sign like it's one block up, they've got it, and two blocks up. I think we had talked about that, yeah, but uh, we haven't put that sign in. Okay, so that's still on the on the. Uh, yeah, to we'll list. continue to evaluate that intersection. Yeah. Uh, the city is initiating some changes in the website that will cause, I would say, a multifold increase in the number of requests and so on, uh, as I read. Are they going to be putting that information on a spreadsheet? And is that something that we could have a report on once in a while? Like we had 50 calls about potholes and we had 200 calls for we need a stop sign on this and that and so on, something to review? Um, I think once we fully implement that program, so this is the first phase of it. This is uh, the um, request tracker. <clears throat> My Moro Bay, depending on which app you have on your phone or if you're doing it on your on the computer. But we're also doing an asset management work order system that will will ultimately be the back end for that that has the ability to uh, better pull reports out of that. So we're looking to implement that uh, um, be fully implemented by July of this year. So we'll be able to get. Uh, uh, that information pulled out of that database readily. Right now, it doesn't facilitate reports um, um, that well, but with CityWorks, we'll be able to pull those reports very easily. Great. So we're going to be using a SQL database with all that, so we can correct. We can write queries for whatever we want on any kind of a thing. Yeah, we're working on the workflow right now for that uh, SQL database. Oh, great, great. The uh, under collection systems capital projects. Uh, 
we're spending some money there for a lift station, number one, for a pump and so on. Is that lift station going to be a permanent fixture that will be useful with our new uh, water reclamation facility? Yeah, lift station one will remain there. Um, it takes um, kind of that end of town that drains down to it and pumps it up. Uh, up over the little hill that'll go to um, where the big lift station will end up being somewhere near the existing wastewater treatment plant with the new project. Mm, great. Okay. Um, it looks like on spring cleanup, that's, that's something that we contract with waste management for, I would imagine. Yes. And that's going to be a three foot by three foot by nine foot or two, two cubic feet or right. two uh, cubic yards two of, yards, of yeah. information in that kind of, it, the configuration doesn't make any difference. And uh, my neighbors mentioned that a while back. And uh, so if we take what we've got and cut it up so that it will fit in something that's similar to that size, they'll pick it up. Correct. And we need to notify them that we've, that we've got it on the curb. Um, I'm not sure if we need to notify them or not. I'll no. check into that. No. I don't think so. Uh, it, they just put it out. You just put it out there and they'll take it. Yeah. I, I wanted to also mention this because I, I'd like the folks at home to know about this um, when it's coming up. And maybe you want to share that with us. And, and what Stuart was talking about, of course, was the size of the trash that you may put out and will be picked up for free on, I think it's the collection day after... Right. The, After the, the, the garage. I'm, I've been checking on this because I'm decluttering. And, right. And um, it's April 2nd and 3rd is the citywide garage sale, I believe. Okay. And so the following weekend is a cleanup. And I was told that I was allowed to drag 12 garbage bags to the curb. But if I had a refrigerator or any large appliances or a couch or anything that was unusually large that I needed to call them, and there is sometimes a small fee attached, like $15, to have them haul something that's particularly large away. So you do need to let them know if you have something that's really large. Right. So everybody got that. If you are, are doing spring cleaning, be ready for the week of April 11th to the 15th, depending on when your pickup day is. <laughs> Did you have anything else, Stuart? Oh, yeah. Okay. It, it, it <laughs> <laughs> And uh, it, it looks like I did call waste management and talk to them about this because I've got an old rusty rack and a bunch of other things. And they wanted $54 to haul the, haul the old rusty rack off. And they wanted uh, a little chair like one of these. Uh, that's $45 to haul off. And it, it's expensive to do it. So uh, I said, what if it's cut up and, and down in size? And he did suggest that I wait till the period that we're, we've got set up to bring it in and put it out on the curb. And... We don't have to bag it, but it does have to be, you know. That a, size, yeah. And, and you've got to call them. If it's something heavy or, or something else is going on, you've got to call them and let them know uh, what's going on. Because uh, they'll pick up white goods in a different vehicle. It's not the standard trash truck. White goods are like refrigerators, washing and dryers, that type of thing. So, Old chairs and yeah. stuff like that, yeah. yeah. The... Uh, Choro stream gauge. What's a stream gauge? It's a, um, simply explained, it's a way to measure flow in the stream. So uh, the plan is to create a regular section in Choro Creek with concrete um, with a flume in there so that when the water flows through there, um, at certain flow rates, it'll be certain heights on that flume, and there'll be a, a ultrasonic gauge that bounces off the, like radar, bounces off the water surface, tells us what that elevation is. That can be correlated with a rating curve, which you develop to um, um, rate that section so you know what the flow is. It's required by our um, water rights permit to use the uh, Choro Valley um, wells. Great. Uh, the nutmeg replacement tank, what size is that tank going to be? A million yeah. gallons. It's a million. Yeah. Okay. I understood they were a, a dollar a, a gallon to build tanks of that size. Uh, probably a little more than that. Are they? Yeah. 
Okay, I just thought I'd throw that out. Yeah, it's, we're looking at probably a reinforced concrete um, um, tank up there instead of the steel tanks because one of the issues is visual, so we'll need to um, um, bury that tank into the, the top of the hill there so it, it can't be seen. And then, of course, if, if we do end up with the Rigetti property, that's part of the, of the yes. deal there, isn't it? So we'll, the, we'll be paying either paying a lease payment to ourselves or we won't be paying a lease payment at all. <laughs> to the city. That area up there is more than just the size of the tank then, isn't it? It's, it's half an acre or something? It's about an acre that we lease up there. Does that include the, the telephone towers or is that separate? No, that's uh, not on the, I don't think that's on the Rigetti property. That's on oh, okay. a, another piece of parcel of property. Uh, some of the acronyms I'm still not familiar with. What's a UM, a UWMP? Urban Sorry. Water Management Plan. You? Yes, I promised I would cut back on the acronyms. You too. mentioned that last time. Yes, I know, and I didn't. <laughs> or I didn't edit other people's work uh, <laughs> uh, to take out uh, the uh, acronyms. I have to say, staff is really doing a good job with, with the reports and numbering the pages and everything. You can follow what's going on. Uh, smart irrigation controllers, do we use those at the parks? Yes, we do. Okay. So but they, we've turned, um, for the most part, have turned those off uh, because we did get a little bit of rain. We're not going to talk about bikes right now. That's going to be a separate report, right? No, that's part of the director's, it's an attachment to the director's report. Do we license bicycles? Does the city license bicycles? Yeah. I'm not sure if we do or not, if the police department does or not. I think you can license a bicycle through DMV, um, but I'm not sure if the city d does a registration program. My neighbor's got a, a, an expensive one, and it's $2,000. And I imagine some of those bikes are quite expensive, but where I'm going with that is there might be a little source of revenue with license fees on bicycles. If yeah, That way, if one of those gets stolen, then they... I'd, uh, I'd make sure that I knew what the serial number was. It's on the bottom of the bottom bracket. Um, make sure you write that down at least with a, somewhere a $2,000 bicycle or more. I think that's the entry level for a race bike. <laughs> Road is bike. it really? Yeah, yeah. Wow. Um, it says bike lane striping with uh, required pavement repair. Are <clears throat> with the striping? Of course, it's a chicken and the egg. We have to we have to uh, have the chicken first to produce the egg. So we have to fix the streets to do any of the striping in some places. Yes, it doesn't make sense to stripe then do pave over the top of it, then stripe again. So uh, I think that's what the bike committee is asking for there is as we do our pavement repair to make sure that we, we do the appropriate striping. Um, and one of the places they're specifically concerned about is the Tascadero Road um, between the high school and the new bridge to get a fog line in there and um, uh, share the road signs. <clears throat> you know, part of part of that's in there now, isn't it? Up to the um, the western entrance to the high yeah. the high school, and then beyond that, it becomes really rough. Pa I ride that every day at lunch. Uh, 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 becomes really rough pavement, and uh, there's a f old faded fog line there. It looks like we're going to need to do a lot of maintenance on our streets and so on. And I read that the federal government has got all sorts of plans, and so does the state. Would it be possible to know what their share is in advance, or do you have to identify everything and then submit it and then find out what they're going to pay and then move on? Um, I could probably almost guarantee you that the state and federal government is going to pay nothing to the cities for their local streets and roads. Yeah. Um, that money will be going to highways and congestion management projects um, rather than local streets and roads. I, I just came from the SLOCOG. The uh, San Luis Obispo Council of Governments are a local MPO for um, transportation, and we spent about two hours talking about 
um, becoming a self-help county, uh, which is we would tax our Santa Barbara County is a, our closest ex example of a self-help county. They have a um, half cent countywide tax that uh, is dedicated toward transportation projects. And if you look at the local streets and roads in Santa Barbara County, there is a big difference between those streets and roads there and in San Luis Obispo County. Yeah, and they raise revenue through gas taxes and other, other sources. They have Measure A. And Measure A, a which is a, a local option sales tax that is 100% dedicated to transportation projects. And you will more likely than not see something on the November ballot in San Luis County for that. Yeah, perhaps it should be. Um, <clears throat> he makes a comment in here about Holland, and I did spend some time there a few years ago. And in Amsterdam, and uh, yeah, they're right, that's a bicycle-friendly community over there. It's also not very many, you know, if you take a look at the total number of, of miles of highway there and roads there, there isn't much because they ride the bullet trains back and forth with mm -hmm. a lot of things. And the, uh, But it does, it does reduce that. I just wanted to make that comment that people are used to riding bicycles there, and of course we need our roads for transportation here. And, <clears throat> I wouldn't want to see us forsake our roads for bicycles, <laughs> and they're still we still need roads. So that was one of the comments there. And they don't drive very fast there, also, like we do here. That's all I have. All right, thank you. Um, I just wanted to have you um, let anybody who's watching know that there still are some uh, water conservation rebates available. Is that correct? Yes, there are. We have rebates for um, rain barrels, um, cash for grass, so removing lawn area, um, smart irrigation controllers, which we haven't had too many people uh, take advantage of, irrigation retrofit, um, again, not too many. And then um, toilet and uh, washing machine rebates are still um, out there. And those rebate forms are on our website um, in the water conservation section. You can download the um, form to fill out. If you have any questions, um, Ms. Damaris Hansen in our office would be the contact right, to get that information. Thank you. And just for the sake of anybody who might be watching us, could you just very briefly explain uh, where you're at on the, on the new water reclamation facility? Because I know that there has been a change. And if you could just explain Sure. What's happened briefly, sure. that would be great. So in the, in the last uh, couple months, um, we've been working with both the Rancho Colina property owner and the Regretti property owner. Uh, the Rancho Colina um, property owner ha has a desire, in, after consultation with the family, um, not to have the wastewater treatment plant in the first area that we looked at, but moving it to the west a little bit in, um, up on the slope, and that caused us to look at the um, other choice, uh, the other high choice in, uh, for WRF facilities, which was the Rigetti site. Um, so we, we looked at that. We have now entered into an agreement, an option to purchase <coughs> the Rigetti property. Uh, so if we do need that, we have that locked down. Um, if you saw the last council meeting, um, Steve McIlvain, Rancho Colina, uh, made a statement to council that he's still there, he's not going anywhere, and if something happens, he's still willing to talk about his property. He's talk, willing to talk about if we need easements through the property to serve further up the valley, valley for easements, that uh, that um, property is available. That's, that's great. Mm -hmm. Good. And so the decision will be made soon. The, we'll be going to our Water Reclamation Facility Citizens Advisory Committee, their first meeting in March, which I think is March, March 1st. 1st. March 1st. It'll be 3 p.m. in this room. Um, we'll look at any additional information that we have, discuss those options in great detail, because I think the... Uh, the report was distributed maybe the evening of the last uh, uh, joint meeting, so uh, uh, now um, the committee's had a, you know, a couple weeks to digest that information. Um, they'll be making a recommendation to council who will be acting on that at their next uh, meeting. Okay, thank you. Can, and I, oh, can I ask something real quick? 
Could you throw a copy of that report in the basket over at Public Works? I didn't get one because I was out of town for sure. the last meeting. So I have it when I go to the next meeting. Yes, and um, the um, slides from that presentation are in the PWAB packet, too. Oh, okay. So then. you have those. So is this the report that This you... is the um, summary of the report. Oh, okay. And then the full report I can make available. I'd appreciate it if you'd okay. leave me one. Thanks. I am sorry, I don't know about it. It's generally on Monday nights. Okay. No problem. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or no. um, I just have one last question for you, Rob. Sure. Um, and that has to do with the status of the pavement management plan. I'm just, I know we've talked about that sometime last year, and I, I, are you working on it, or are we going to get to see it? Yes, we're working on that, and um, uh, council has an objective in this year's objectives to do a uh, um, a street summit again this year, so we'll bring, be bringing that to PWAB, I would say, in April or May's meeting ah, um, to okay. take a look at. Um, it'll be timely because of the, the county effort that's going on. And um, at my home, uh, I should have brought it with me, but um, we recently got a flyer from a city of Atascadero, and they have a very nice format for um, sharing with the public um, their version of our Measure Q for uh -huh. how they've uh, done on their um, street. So um, we'll steal that format to uh, take a look at. Great. Thank you. Um, all right. So uh, we just need to accept. Is that right? We, Correct. No action no required. No action required. Can I ask one question? Could we add the future agenda items again? It used to be on the earlier, you know, at the end of it usually had a line item there for future agenda items. Whether there are any or not, it gives, right. these, it gives the members an opportunity to add, the, you know, that we can... To have scheduled for a future. For requesting those items, just right. remind right. the board. Yeah, that, right. uh, could, please, right. thank um, you. They may not get on no, the agenda I, right. if they're not part of the I work, follow work that program. Yeah. Um, while I'm on the top of a work program, council will more likely than not be passing their objectives at the next council meeting. Out of that, um, we should schedule a meeting to, at, probably at the next PWAB meeting, to go over those objectives, the ones that relate to public work, so that we make sure we get all those objectives on our work plan so we can schedule those out. And I think that'll help with making sure that we stay on task and we have plenty of things to talk about on the um, um, future no, agenda. It was just brought to my attention. I know you used to have it as a line item on that regularly, but right. very seldom we used it. Yeah. Well, and that's a great idea, Rob. I, th I like it. I think that, that'll help us, too, to know what's coming and, and all be on the same page. So that's great. Okay, let's move on to item B2, discussion of the solid waste collection in public areas. And like I mentioned earlier, Ms. Burlingame was unable to make today's meeting, so um, I did review this staff report, but I was not the primary author of it, so... Um, I am, and I, we do not have a presentation for it. Um, in a nutshell, um, I'll summarize it first and then we can go in as much detail as we want to. Uh, we have had problems with, especially during high tourist season and keeping up with um, trash in the downtown and out at the Rock um, area. The, um, um, we, we looked at trash can placement um, and our collection schedule and we have some recommendations that we um, are going to implement and take your recommendations into consideration. This is an operational item, so we really don't need to take this to council for their approval to, I don't think council 
will probably um, have much input on where trash cans get placed, which corner. So um, in the downtown, um, we have a variety of pickup schedules. So from once a week to uh, three times a week. We want to change that um, um, schedule to be more regular and then to have a regular placement of trash cans in the downtown. Um, and that is... You, if you look at um, the counts, the packet um, page 38 and 39, 38 in the blue location shows their existing placement, and 39 shows the proposed locations of those trash cans and recycling containers. So some of the issues in the downtown, there's um, fewer empty storefronts, um, increase in the number of special events uh, um, along Morabay Boulevard. Um, Saturday Farmer's Market is now a regular feature on uh, Main Street. Um, and so those two exhibits show the, the locations and we're gonna increase the number of cans from, to 24 from the 14 that are there. Um, and then um, also increase the, um, um, especially in the area of farmer's market from five to seven, and then adjust the uh, collection frequency um, from one day to three days a week throughout the year, and then an extra pickup on the city holidays, and then an extra pickup for the special events that happen in the downtown. Any questions on the, maybe we'll take one kind of segment at a time. Any questions or comment on kind of the, the downtown trash? Oh, the downtown trash. Well, well, we'll start down here this time since, uh, and go this way. So Stu, do you want to start? Uh, downtown trash, when I, when I first moved here six years ago, I was part of Morro Bay Beautiful. And we got involved in those cans in downtown. And the, uh, having the cans painted and making them attractive and doing those kinds of things and maybe even having a little contest where you can go out and find the a little picture that's on a can and if you find six of those you can get an award and that's kind of things. I would trust that we would make whatever cans we put in, they're gonna be the concrete ones, is that what we're the talking The aggregate about? concrete cans, yeah, they don't tend to migrate uh, very <laughs> easily. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you know, I went. And they uh, do something like that, so they would be uniform in, in what we're what we're doing. That's why they're eight hundred dollars a can. Correct. And so, council did authorize with the mid year ten thousand dollars for additional um, trash cans. Yeah, they're taking it out of the additional uh, tax that we TOT revenue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The are those cans when they fill up, do they dump them someplace? Does does the staff dump them someplace and then they collect it, or do they? Is it each individual can? How do they pick those? So those uh, trash cans are emptied by more of a garbage company uh, on a regular pickup basis. So as they're coming through town picking up commercial garbage, they also empty those trash cans along with that. So that's why we needed to increase the frequency of uh, pickup to um, um, make sure that we don't have overflowing cans. Yeah, we had the... Uh when I was involved in Cayucas, we had overflowing garbage cans down there, and we ended up putting in some large bins, and we would dump in those bins when it got really bad during an event and so on. I, I just wonder if uh, that's going to be done, too, if we're going to have additional capacity available, if we have a uh, bike parade or we have a Fourth of July parade or something that overloads those cans. Has there been any thought given to a a dumpster that we would dump into? So um, the downtown trash cans, that really hasn't been an issue expect, except during special events. So we're going to add a, um, the option of a additional pickup during those special events. It's, it's more efficient to have the garbage company do it than to have additional staffing uh, do that during those special events. Um, so we would... Um, increase that frequency. Also during a special event, typically um, they'll provide additional trash containers that the event sponsor is responsible for also. Um, so um, 
with probably the exception of the farmer's market, I don't think they're providing any additional um, um, trash capacity. Do we charge the vendors at the farmer's market for those booths? The city does not charge um, for those booths um, at uh, farmer's market. We issued a, a planning perm through uh, planning commission, a, uh, a use permit for them to use uh, the public right away. I know they, they do charge in slow for that farmer's market the, there. The downtown association, the business improvement district that they have downtown, I think not the city of Slow doesn't charge, but the business improvement district charges. Yeah, yeah, and we don't do that. We yet. don't have a business improvement district in <laughs> Morro Bay. <laughs> okay. Uh, that's pretty much all I have. Thanks. Um, I like the additional placement, and it looks like you, you moved them around quite a bit as, as well to make them a little more efficient. Um, I, I think it's a good idea. Yeah, we tried for a more regular spacing. I, it, it appears that they're randomly spaced now. I'm not sure if there's any um, pattern to it. Yeah. Any questions? David? Um, yeah, going along with what Chris is saying, I think uh, the layout makes more sense, more you know, consistent at intersections with the uh, the garbage cans and I also uh, think it's great that you've extended the area like before Market Street didn't have any cans right. from the city and now it's included farther uh, east on Morro Bay Boulevard as far as as well as farther north on Main Street so it certainly covers uh, our downtown area more efficiently um, in regard to pickup during uh, events um, have they also considered uh, a time frame for those pickups because with Obviously, an event and more garbage being produced, there's more congestion with vehicles and humans, and it would be tough for the garbage truck to make its way down Main Street at noon in the middle of everything to pick up more cans. Um, have they thought about a time yeah, frame? The, the goal would be to not pick up during the actual <laughs> yeah, event right? itself, <laughs> but to start the event with empty containers. So right. hitting them the, the night pick, before and the, the, the night after. The early and, the morning before typically is yeah. when uh, okay. the trash company would come through town. I just asked mainly because I know um, regular residential pickup seems to be a little erratic at yes. the time of, of when you put your cans out and when they finally get picked up. So I was curious if they were uh, pinpointing time frames uh, a little more efficiently for this. The, usually the day before the event um, or immediately thereafter. Um, we've run into that problem with Farmer's Market is um, the pickup uh, was a couple days before Farmer's Market and then a couple days after, so right. they had a chance to get uh, very full during that time period. Okay, great, thank you. Okay, I just have a few quick questions um, because I'm not totally familiar. Is it a problem in the city right now of overflowing trash cans? It's certain locations and at certain times. Oh, okay. uh, you know, as we get busier, oh, okay. um, they overflow more. Oh, okay. um, We'll get to the main, kind of the problem area is, mm. has been down at the rock oh, okay. um, on special events. So well, um, I guess it leads me to my next question. I see in the downtown you're talking of going to 24 instead of 14. You're almost doubling the cans, which basically doubles your storage. So I guess the question as an engineer is, does the frequency need to be more when you have double the storage of trash? I assume the trash, you're gonna have the same volume of trash you've had every year coming up to this date. If you, to me it'd be either you don't add more cans and you pick up more often, or the other alternative would be to add the cans and not have to pick up as often. But I'm hearing that you wish to do both. And like I said, I do not know the problem. I haven't seen it personally. So it just begs the question when I saw you were adding cans plus, you know, wishing to add more um, yeah, I think this is will be an evaluation year oh, okay. uh, once we do that, um, because we have had overflowing. And then what tends to happen is the recycling containers next to them become the de facto um, trash cans because um, people want to do something with it, but the trash can is full, so right. the recycling container becomes the trash can. Well, so. uh, on a cost side for me, I'd rather pay for the extra cans as opposed to extra frequency because it's a one-time payment of the cans where when you're doing it 
based on additional pickups, you do pay once you get over a certain number, as I read in the report. So, uh, you know, I'm trying to, like I said, I don't know the problems. And, say, and the garbage from, company will be looking for a contract extension. Um, so we're um, uh, looking to negotiate for additional um, pickups oh, okay. um, as part of that oh, okay. uh, contract extension. Okay, and I think what my comments here also reflect what you're doing at The Rock. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. okay. Jan. Okay, um, right now we get 30 public cans at no charge. Correct. Right? And if they're going to increase the cans, it'll still be, I mean, is this for the whole city or is this just for, for Main Street, the downtown area? Because on each one, there was a, an option to increase the collection days, also increase the price. But how many, how many pickups do you get for this free pickup? How many times a week? That's not real clear in the contract. So, uh, so it, it could be up to, some of those cans get picked up six times a week and they're free cans. Some of them get picked up three times a week and they're free cans. You designated the cans and the number of pickups. So um, with the new contract, we're going to clarify the, um, the frequency and get that in, um, in writing um, okay. this, this time. And we're going to negotiate for additional cans. Yeah, we read that. But also it said that during this whole report, it was talking about the times that you need it are more during uh, special events or city holidays. Yes. But yet the, the staff recommendation is to increase it, the collection frequency to three days a week. Year-round. Year-round, throughout the year. But when it's negotiated, because right now it says that's $11,475 a year. That's why I want to know how many times does it get picked up now, but you said it's not really clear. How can you decide, how do they know that it's going to be 11000 if they don't really know what the contract is saying? So this would be... Um, Over and above. Over and above we we know each can, how many times it gets picked up. It's just not clear on the, fr the free cans... We have a, let me see if I can explain this. So we have a number of cans in the city. 30 of them are free. They've been designated and they have associated pickups with them. That's all factored into the t current cost right now. Okay. Um, we looked at, right now the trash cans in the downtown during the off season are picked up maybe once a week. Uh, maybe twice a week during the on season. Some of them are picked up two times a week or three times a week. Change that to a regular frequency so we get a regular pickup of the trash cans in the downtown and then also negotiate with the, the um, garbage company to add additional um, free cans. So then my next question, when we figure out how, how much you're adding, and what, is this... Uh, option A only pertaining to downtown that it's going to be eleven thousand four hundred seventy-five more, or is that the Th whole that's, cost? That's in, downtown. That's only the downtown. Correct. Part. And so it'll be okay. So the other, the Rock and the Embarcadero are all negotiated separately. They're all in one bill, but this would be the cost if we were to apportion it to each different area. We're not talking about adding additional cans in, in the Embarcadero or Rock area. Oh, I thought you said that. No, they were taking some away. I think we're going to relocate some existing cans that we have on the Embarcadero, yeah. uh, more efficiently move them around. And it's it possible. says increase service locations from yeah, to, to 14 from 10, so I was assuming there's four extra cans going in there. Those are in places that d don't get any trash use oh. now. There's a, there's a couple in North Morro Bay that never have any trash in them that we're going to move down to the Embarcadero. Oh, gotcha. Yes. Okay, I understand. Yeah, thank you. So then if you can renegotiate, you're hoping when you do this renegotiation where you can get 40 cans, that then the price, instead of being 11000 will go down to 1000 Correct. So, okay. Okay, I think I... Okay. Debbie. Well, who knew trash should be so complicated? <laughs> so are you saying that 
every area and every trash can has its own life. I mean, it's not, not the whole city does just this. For different areas, for different cans, for different locations, for different things, it's all in that contract, but it's all different. It's not this, this so the downtown is one thing, and the rock is another thing, and the Embarcadero is another thing. It's even more complicated See, than that. See, that's what I'm saying, so different I don't can, even want to go there. <laughs> different cans in the downtown have different pickups. Yeah, that's frequencies. what I'm saying. It's like having a huge family. You just don't know what everybody's doing. And it's not all spelled out in the contract. It's yeah. what's morphed. It's what's on our bill. Uh, so somebody called the garbage company and said, we need to change this from one pickup to two pickups. But we never put it, memorialized it in contractual language. It just came on our bill. Well, I'm just going to say I'm glad you're addressing it and getting it straightened out. But I, I fi I'm fine with the downtown. I just I'm, uh, have s uh, some issues with the Morrow, uh, the Rock, Morrow Creek area. So when we get to that, I'll say okay. something. Okay. Um, Embarcadero is another kind of easier area. Uh -huh. So um, uh, we're adding four cans to the um, Embarcadero, but we're moving them from locations, uh, like I said, in North Morro Bay. And then us, there's one, I think, uh, where there used to be a grocery store on Harbor Street uh, that needed a trash can there, but <coughs> there's really no trash there uh, anymore. So we're uh, relocating that. So we'll, we'll end up with four additional cans on the Embarcadero. They're typically six days a week during the high season, three days a week during the low season. Um, on Sundays, there's a harbor maintenance person that checks and makes sure that there's no overflowing and takes care of that during the, during the busy Sundays. So um, really, uh, Embarcadero uh, hasn't been a, a trash issue um, our real trash problem area is the rock. So we, we thought we had solved it with the big bellies. The automatically compacting um, um, trash cans. Um, it's probably not the best location to put a um, mechanical device in such a harsh environment uh, uh, because they're they're breaking down is what's happening. And if we refurbish them, they're going to not be going to be put back at the rock. They're going to be moved to in parks, more sheltered areas. Um, because while they have paid for themselves, um, now they now they need to have, be repaired. And if we're going to repair them, we're not going to put them back out at the rock because um, it just doesn't work. So one of the a couple options for the rock is to not replace the trash cans along the um, parking area, but to use the dumpsters near the, tra uh, the restroom that have already slots in them for people to put recyclables and garbage. Or, and then uh, on those concrete pads, put benches um, out there. And then the other option would be to add trash cans um, out there. What we were hoping for is to um, replace those with benches so people have a nice place to sit and it wouldn't be next to a garbage can. Um, and they could walk their trash over to the um, drums, dumpsters. So comments on the... Yeah. Uh, well, I, I, since I didn't ask questions before, my, I, I actually, I trust staff to know where to put trash cans, and I'm assuming that you monitor that situation, and you kind of know if what isn't being used, you should move it. Yes. <laughs> so I, I really do trust staff on that. My real question has to do with the bottom line costs of all of this, and I know there were different options and different costs presented, but no bottom line. <laughs> And I realize that there are contingencies because you may be able to negotiate some of this with the garbage company. You may be able to uh, get a grant or a correct, for, correct for the recycling cans. So you really don't know at this point in time what the bottom line cost right. will be. And correct? then once we know that cost, it'll have to be included in the um, budget it, for next year. For next year. Yeah. Uh, but so at this point, really, what you may want to do is to decide how you want to spend that 10000 which you can spend right now. Right. <laughs> and so uh, that would be my recommendation to come up with a, what are the priorities for the, of, of all of these various options, what are the ones that are most important to do right now that might be most beneficial? And basically, um, with the mid-year budget, 
we were given direction on how to sp uh, spend that money. Yeah, but really just 10000 at this point. Right, correct, for additional uh, cans. containers. Yeah. Right, yeah, okay. All right, just, so, just to clarify what kind of a recommendation we might want to make, are there any other questions about the placement? Uh, not necessarily about the placement, but do we have a, a yardstick, so to speak, on what they're picking up now? Do they tell us how much volume we have? Um, I'm not sure that that is um, measured because it's combined with the commercial garbage. Yeah. So mm. it's difficult to, seg you know, when they go to dump at the landfill, they weigh the truck, but it's also mm -hmm. combined with all the commercial garbage that they pick up, too. So we don't get a separate truck for city containers. So they could tell us we need uh, four times the amount of pickup to keep those clean and... and we pay for it anyway. Yes. And that's where I'm going with that. It'd be nice to have a yardstick someplace, a guesstimate or an estimate, and uh, so we can measure that. And they're taking the recyclable waste and they're going to start running those through a digester. Have they got one out there yet? Um, no. They um, need um, basically commitments from um, all the cities and the county to um, extend their contracts. Um, because they need a guaranteed waste stream before they can, um, before the company that's going to uh, build and run the digester will come and do it. They need a guaranteed income, basically, uh, before they will do that. So they get no free diesel until they, uh, all, yes. all this gets negotiated and, and, right. we're, and we're moving along. It still would be nice to have some sort of a measure. We know what the what the commercial institutions are are doing because they're paying for it, and they wouldn't pay for it if they weren't filling that thing pretty full. And the, the difference would be what they're picking up in the streets. You'd think there'd be a way to measure that somewhere so we can see. Here's a special event. We used four times as much, you know, capacity. Uh, so that one thing I'd be interested in looking at. Any other questions at this point? I have, I have um, the Morro Rock uh, Creek area. If you wanted me to, uh, oh, if you brother. would like me to proceed to page forty-one, the aerial view of the alternative one can locations, and I actually had a, a, a citizen come up to me on the Embarcadero and complain about the one that is just before the bridge. And she says, it's always full and it's always overflowing. Doesn't anybody ever empty it? And I said, well, I don't know, but I'll look into it. So I walked out there and she was right. So I took photographs all around and I wrote a little memo to Mr. Williams, I think it was, at the city or someone told me to... Wilcox? Wilcox, Wilcox maybe. And I showed him. The, the thing of it is, is that this aerial shot does not show the bridge. No, because... Right, it's before the bridge. Yes. <laughs> and um, the trash can is in the middle of the road. It's on a little island in the middle of the road. And I'm like, I don't usually drive by and drop off my trash. So I was just wondering if you're bicycling through there or something like that, why would you stop in the middle of the road to dump your trash? And I thought, well, you know where it should be is out where everybody parks and turns around in that nice seating area out there where they sit down and they park their car and they get out of the car and they go, oh, well, let's throw away the wrappers from our candy bars because the car's here and we can just empty, clean everything out and throw in the trash. And I don't understand why it's where it is and obviously it needs, that's a very popular area nicely um, that people want to go down there and spend that time. And um, I think maybe one where it, you can leave it where it is and maybe an additional one where the turnaround is, where that nice seating area is. Um, there's also a nice seating area because you have no trash can from the restroom all the way out to the bridge. That's correct. So that's more than 500 feet. That's, but there's a nice little cutout there where there's a little bench. Now, I know nobody likes to sit next to trash, but it is, does make sense that if you're walking and you're having a soda and you, and you sit down, it would be nice if you could just put it in it. I mean, this is just my opinion of what people have said to me, that it's a long time between trash cans going out to the bridge. And the only one that's out there on our side of the bridge is always full. So 
There you go. I believe that that's a once a week pickup, and um, that's picked up by Morro Bay Garbage uh, Company. Okay. That's all. <coughs> any other questions? Any other, any other um, I'm looking over at the Embarcadero map. Um, I see that there, are, there seems to be, according to the map, no garbage cans at Tidelands Park, which I feel is inaccurate because I think when I go there, I see garbage cans. But there are none recognized on our map here. So, so we've only included the garbage cans that are part of the um, cans that are in the public right-of-way. We didn't include the park okay. um, cans. So Anchor Memorial... Um, uh, Mariner Park and Tidelands, along with Centennial, have additional trash cans know. associated with the with the park itself. Okay, perfect. And then over at the Rock, uh, you answered my question already about the big bellies, and I was I was wondering why they were going. Um, I feel that alternative A is a little bit overkill with eight cans replacing the current four along the edge of the parking lot on the north side, facing the north side of the rock. But at the other hand, um, I think alternative two is, is too much the other direction. If people are out on the beach and they have to pick up their towels and their blankets and their chairs and their umbrellas and their garbage and walk up to the parking lot, then have to walk across the parking lot to the restroom, I feel like there needs to be sort of something midpoint for those people. Um, and then my other question is, circling around to the south side of the rock, where we have that small beach over there by Widow's Wall, and people tend to use that a lot more now, there seems to be, again, none recognized there. Does that fall into the park that, like you were talking? That's uh, State Park's okay. um, so property. Their cans are theirs, because yes. I, I believe there are some there as well. Okay. That's it from me. Any more questions? All right, let's bring it back and discussion about uh, what we'd like to do. Yeah, I'll go ahead. Okay, Stephen. Um, I guess my question would be, I, I count on staff to know the issues, Rob, and I think you know the issues of what's going on there, and I feel like I wouldn't make a good determination based on what I have here in the staff report. The only thing I would like to add is, since you are adding 10 more cans, or that's the idea, that maybe not do the frequency yet, change that or pay extra money for, see how it fleshes out, and then if you do need the additional pickups, do so. And definitely have a pickup before you have the Amgen tour come into town. Yes. <laughs> I think that's a requirement of our contract. Oh, there it is. Actually. <laughs> um, other than that, you know, I, I, I'm going to go along with staff's recommendation myself. Um, and I assume those alternatives were alternatives, but the original proposal is the one that staff probably recommended yes. first. Is that a... Is so, that a um, um, what I'm hear, hearing from uh, Commissioner Shively is to not implement the additional pickups until we've evaluated the additional trash cans. In, yeah, in, in the given area. If you're not adding trash cans to an area and it's a problem now, then I'd probably increase the frequency right. at those locations. But you, you're almost doubling the storage. Um, which will allow for less frequency. I don't know if you wind up with trash being thrown because there's no trash can there. Is that a problem in this town at all? Or are um, people pretty good about I think they're pretty good about um, waiting till they get to the next <laughs> trash can before oh, okay. they throw something away. Um, right. um, we do have a little bit of a problem in some of our parks with... Um, um, those large items that maybe yeah. you don't have room at home to get rid of, like right. that extra piece of sheetrock and uh, uh, the broken down chair, they end up next to the dumpsters or in the dumpsters in, in so, the So there are dumpsters in town? That in, the, in, mainly in the parks, uh, oh, North I Point Park. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah, because you're right. You know, people in motorhomes a lot of times. They're going to dump their trash in that location. I do agree with Deb, though, especially on the new uh, bike path going out to the bridge. That is a long pull between getting all the way out to the bridge and going back over near the restrooms. And I think, you know, it might make sense to throw something in between there okay. somewhere along the way that makes yeah. some kind I'll pass of that, sense. That'll, yeah. that'll Maybe at the junction where is you get on the bike. Is there something at Coleman Park in that location? Oh, there might be, there might be at ones Coleman in the Park. park. Uh, but 
from basically the intersection of the two bike paths all the way out to the bridge. There's nothing there. There's oh. one at uh, the south end and one at the north end. But there is, I, I keep forgetting, there are ones in the park also. I mean, yeah. In that, okay, I got gotcha. you. Okay. Uh, uh, Del Mar anybody? Park has uh, two dumpsters out there too, and I have seen some people throwing some stuff in it. And a, uh, maybe a sign or something, or maybe some of the merchants put locks on their dumpsters so people don't put stuff in them. Yes, and, you do. <laughs> <laughs> and the, uh, so, you know, maybe we can move around and change a little bit and notify people that, yeah, don't throw your sheetrock in here. Yeah. Or it's a penalty or put one of those sides on it. With I think the certain. people that do that kind of stuff don't read signs. <laughs> well, maybe not. They just do it. <laughs> make, yeah. them, make them bilingual. <laughs> so basically you're looking for much, just some suggestions some or suggestions com and comments on, um, on the report. For implementing this new... Uh, right. Regime of uh, trash collection. Okay, okay. Anybody else have some suggestions? Go ahead. I agree with Stephen that uh, increasing the trash cans, you may not need to increase the frequency of the pickup. I think you should probably wait and see. And I'm also, even though you explained it, I'm still, you said some places are picked up three times. Some, I mean, how do you know if you're increasing if they're already, that's my, if you already don't know how often they're picked? So, so I think you should just I, leave it I'm like at, it is. I'm at a loss here. Janine would probably remember which cans get uh -huh. what day uh, pick up. We have a list of all the cans based on the billing, what days they get picked mm -hmm. up. Okay. So uh, we do have that information. I just don't have it in my head, nor did I grab the list from her. So. Well, then I am re also relying on staff to know where these cans should be and the pickup. But I just think that before we increase the number of days we pick up, should see how increased can solve the problem. Okay. That's... I don't have anything. Okay. Anybody else? Any comments or suggestions? Uh, when does when do you renegotiate this, the contract? It's um, ongoing right now. I think uh -huh. the garbage company would like to see it happen sooner rather than later. It's it's associated with the organics um, pickup. Right. I was so going to ask about that. So they need guaranteed uh, twenty year contracts to make this um, um, digester project that they're um, um, implementing. Uh, for Morro Bay Garbage Company and the associated other kind of South County uh, garbage. They're all one company, um, even though they have different names, um, to make this digester project uh, work. So um, um, we do have some room to negotiate with the, with the garbage company on that. Okay. Um, we're looking at uh, uh, trash frequency pickup, and then also negotiating um, additional alternatively fueled vehicles. So replacing the diesel vehicles that come to Morro Bay with natural gas uh, vehicles. Ah, okay, okay. And so at this point, you are moving ahead to replace ten, uh, the $10,000. Yeah, yeah, adding the 10 cans in the downtown, moving them to where it makes more logical sense. Um, okay. We wouldn't increase the contract amount until with the budget. So we do it. We'll have some time to evaluate uh, All right. this. Yes. And we can bring this back to the advisory board and report back to see, um, let the community know and this board how we're doing. On yeah, I think the idea of an evaluation uh, is it really a good one to actually monitor and see how it goes and see if the problem is solved with just the new can? So that's great. I guess um, I'd like to hear uh, what your feeling is from the board's perspective about um, it. It seemed to me that what I heard was going from four big bellies to eight trash cans might be too much, but going from four big bellies to no trash cans might be. Um, a little bit excessive on the other side. I was just wondering if there's consensus on that, whether we should still keep a few trash cans down at the edge of the parking lot at the Rock. Any thoughts on that? I think kind of just for the, for the benefit David mentioned, ha having, having them down near the edge just because people are actually going to use them that way. Otherwise, I don't think they're going to trek across the, the, uh, the parking lot there. Um, so I think it's maybe do six and move move two of the others down to the uh, path to the bridge, um, something in that respect. Okay. 
I would agree with that. <laughs> All right, and you don't need a recommendation then. No, no. no. All right, Great. I would agree. I would agree with that too. And the good news is, is that if we need more, we can always get more. So yes, let's start there, with less and work our way as needed. Uh, yes. The, the um, issue also with trash cans, the, the ones we have to put down there need to be um, uh, bird proof. Yeah. So uh, that, that was one of the issues that drove us to the big bellies also was birds can't get into the trash can to pull garbage um, out of them. So they um, need some sort of lid on there that... Uh, um, will stay in place. Um, I got a quick uh, question as an aside on this. Um, do they charge you more if it's a... I know dumpsters cost more than, say, dumping a trash can, but when you get into the can size, I know for the residential they charge between the little, little ones and the, as you go up the list. Do they, do they do that to the city also based on the kind of So cans? all of our trash cans in the aggregate containers are all the same size? Except for those big bellies, I yes. assume that's a different animal. But the big bellies, the advantage of the big bellies is they have a compactor function. Unfortunately, it can compact it to more weight than the uh, um, uh, worker is allowed to pick up. Oh, so we're okay. not able to use the compactor function and oh. have Morro Bay Garbage Company pick up those containers. Oh. So they're not picking them up with their grabbers? Or, N there's no, no they, it has to be manually em oh, emptied. I got you. Uh, oh, okay. Thank you. Well, and since um, Stephen has asked for um, an additional item, it, does anybody have a future agenda item that they wanted to mention at this point? Uh, there has been some conversation, I'm a birder around town, and about closing that gate at the rock. I can understand it when the water is blowing up off the seawall out there straight up, but it's closed sometimes when it's not. And they, of course, people stack up right there where those garbage cans are and so on. And they, uh, I talked to the ranger at the, at the park about why they do that, and he said, well, well, us in the Harbor Patrol, and I said, is there a formula for you doing that, or is it arbitrary? Basically, it's arbitrary. If the water looks like it's going to blow up today, and it's going to be 10 feet above, and so on, uh, they'll close it. And I said, well, why? And he said, <clears throat> because we can't turn the fire engine around at the end, and we expect something's going to happen. Well, I see people out there, even if the gate's closed, out there walking around taking pictures of the water blowing over the top of them. I've seen a lady and a young child get knocked down from the waves and so on. So uh, where I'm going with that, it'd be, it would be good to take a look at that parking lot on the far end and maybe get together with the state or get together with whoever it is and widen it out on the end so we can turn an emergency vehicle around out there. And that would help the issue. And, and, and of course, identifying it a little better out there about where to park and where not to park. They've got signs out there that says emergency vehicles only, but people will pull out to the end and get out of their car. They don't speak English. They're, you know, whatever. And they, uh, so that's that would be something I'd like to look at and see if we can. He said, well, if, if you make a... Uh, comment to us and, and they will negotiate. We'll think about it. He didn't say negotiate. He said we'll think about making some changes out there. So uh, that's something I'd like to look at. I'm not sure if that's in the purview of the Public Works Advisory I, Board. I don't think to, it is. I, <laughs> I'm afraid <laughs> not. <laughs> uh, thank Maybe you. Harbor. It's, it's, yeah, pavement. I think it's pavement. <laughs> Maybe Harbor Advisory Board. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, I think it's actually a state park issue, but um, I'm pretty sure that it's not something that we can address here probably. But thank you, Stuart. Um, I think we are ready to adjourn the meeting. So um, before you adjourn, let sure. me uh, mm -hmm. give you a preview of things that were, are um, coming forward. Um, we'll have a, uh, a major water item um, that we need to make a, a big, not a big ordinance change, but an ordinance change to the way that we um, calculate w, water equivalency units. Um, try to refrain from abbreviations and acronyms. <laughs> um, water equivalency units, um, council has directed that ordinance change. Um, and so we'll be bringing that and 
included with that is water conservation and um, basically allocation to development. So it'll be coming to Public Works Advisory Board, then to Planning Commission, and then on to City Council um, this um, springtime. We'll have, um, once Council adopts the objectives, um, we'll be bringing those Public Works objectives to look at um, work plan items so that that'll lay out kind of the agenda for this next year of things that, to look at. I think that'll be a more, um, inclusive, cohesive way to um, uh, bring items forward is looking at the objectives that council has that relate to public works and getting those on our schedule. So we'll be bringing those to um, the Public Works Advisory Board as a couple of major work items that we'll have in the future. That's great, thank you. So we are adjourned until our next meeting, which is March 16th at 5.30 here. So thank you again, everyone.